when I got started was 1979, when I took spare parts and built an Apple II. And then I tried to figure out how I could attach musical instruments to the computer, which um, led to why I needed to learn how to write code, which led to quitting college, which then led to um, getting a job. And, and then over the years, that turned into getting hired at Apple. So I was sort of informally in the QuickTime group as I was a formal member of the um, OS team, although I didn't really report too well into that group. We were always kind of a renegade kind of a group, but we got shit done. But the work was really the sound manager, which was this complete rewrite that ended up fixing a lot of problems and ported it from all this nasty assembly code and rewrote it in C and like made it actually go like 10 times faster. And then right about the same time that we got the sound manager working, I started working inside of the moonlight hours over in the forbidden zone of um, what the QuickTime guys were doing. They were hiding out in the networking building. And the original idea was, now we got these CD-ROMs. They're not just bigger floppies. What can we do with them? I know, let's make movies. And so that's where the postage stamp movie idea came from was, you know, you couldn't put one on a floppy, but you could put one on a CD-ROM. So, you know, taking advantage of the new media. And so that was the basic idea for QuickTime. And then that invented all these other ideas of how do you compress audio, how do you compress video, how do you stream it, how do you play it, how do you synchronize it, how do you do all these things in real time, how do you control it, and, you know, and then QuickTime turned into this entire industry based upon that basic idea. The people on the outside think that, you know, it's like this wonderful world of Oz or Disney going on and all of us are just all these brilliant, amazing, happy people and like it's not. It's like a sausage factory, man. You really don't want to know how this stuff happens. A lot of it is just bad arguments and politics and working around the rules and, and, and not doing the right thing and apologizing for it later and getting fired a few times. I mean, that's how things got done. It's definitely like, you know, don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. You know, there's a lot of that kind of stuff, and like, you really want to know how this stuff is built. And to me, it's embarrassing. Like, there's there's always big flaws to a lot of the stuff. You know, there was a computer that we shipped where uh, the speaker's magnet was right next to the hard drive. Now, when you played a sound, it caused the hard drive's read-write head to misalign. So in the midst of like playing your QuickTime movie, your computer would completely freeze because it played a sound. And I'm like, what kind of engineers do we have around here that would put a magnet right next to your hard drive? Jesus Christ, it's just, a, it beeped and it crashed. You know? And then they wanted me, believe it or not, this is the solution, they wanted me to change the decibels of the speaker so that it wouldn't interfere with the hard drive. I mean, you're kidding me. That's classic, see, you know, engineers are retarded. They have some kind of brain damage that allows them to not have social skills so that they could concentrate long enough to write code. But it's a disease. That's why I had to quit. I mean, I'm like an engineer in recovery. I'm, you know, I don't want to write code anymore. It just makes you retarded. I mean, get a girlfriend, get a life.